before we begin, inshallah, I would like to humbly ask the brothers to come forward and fill in the space. So the remaining brothers that are coming in are able to sit down, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, mala quluba awliyaihi bi nuri hubbihi wa shawqi liqaihi. Wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika. المتفرد بجلاله وجماله وكماله ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله الهادي إلى منهاج وصاله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وقال سبحانه وتعالى لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف الرحيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه صحيح البخاري All praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who we know to be the most merciful and the most kind. No praises is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most noble and the most generous, the most exalted and the most high. We send salutations and praises on this very beautiful day of Jumu'ah to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his progeny, his pure children, his pure wives, and the very great individuals that surrounded him radiallahu anhum ajma'in and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept each and every one of our prayers to accept each and every one of our du'as to elevate each and every one of us in the ranks that we desire most Amin ya rabbal alameen I once again ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the blessed company of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hereafter, in the highest levels of paradise. Amin Ya Rabbal Alameen. Dear respected brothers and elders, honorable mothers and sisters, the very verse that I have recited before you belongs to a long passage and chapter of the Quran. And this chapter particularly is known as the chapter of repentance. The chapter of repentance, as we all know, Surah At-Tawbah. One of the specialties of this very surah is the very fact that it does not start with the mercy and the attributes of mercy and kindness of Allah Ta'ala. Where you would typically have all the other surahs of the Qur'an and all the other chapters of the Qur'an in the name of Allah, the most merciful and the most kind. But Surah At-Tawbah, this chapter, it doesn't start off with the mercy or the attributes of mercy and kindness of Allah Ta'ala. That in itself is a different and longer topic. But my topic and my subject or the highlight of my khutbah today would be towards the last or the second to last verse of this particular surah. But I felt that, that it would be thoughtful for me to mention that because a chapter which starts off without the mercy or the attributes of mercy and kindness of Allah interestingly ends off with the mercy and the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but not only that but also the mercy and the kindness the sympathy and the empathy of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that is our highlight for today that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, despite the fact that he, when it came to being the ideal husband, he was the ideal husband. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when it came to be the ideal leader, he was the ideal leader. When it came to be the ideal person, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the ideal person. And when it came to being the ideal friend, 
the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was that ideal friend. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala makes mention here, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ There is certainly, and indeed, has come to you a messenger. Now the beauty of that is how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is connecting me and you. Of course, the verse was for overall the community and the Muslim community of that time, right? They, they were the recipient of this very verse. But for us, for each and every one of us to feel closer to the Prophet of Allah, Allah Ta'ala says that a messenger has come amongst you, which makes us realize that we are the Ummah of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Ta'ala is making us feel close to the Prophet of Allah. That yes, he is our Prophet, but he's also our friend. And he is our role model. He is the ideal individual that each and every Muslim should have. I ask Allah Ta'ala to make that easy for us. Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being expressed in this very verse where Allah Ta'ala shows the closeness between us and him and then he goes on to mention one of his beautiful attributes and one of his beautiful characteristics. Of course, a person can open up many books and have long conversations and the whole night will pass and you can keep on going with the characteristics of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the character from his characteristics وسلم, that Allah Ta'ala mentions here are these very words. And Allah Ta'ala says that Azizun alayhi ma anittum harisun alaykum. Allah Ta'ala says, He, the Prophet of Allah, is concerned about your suffering. Wow. Wouldn't we want a person? in our life wouldn't we want many people in our lives that care about us to that extent and of course i'm not negating the the love between the parents and the children or the children for the parents but the prophet of allah وسلم, before anything he was your friend he was that friend for you when you look into the seerah of the prophet of allah وسلم, you will see that in the city life that he grew up in, whether it was Makkah and then of course eventually Medina, everyone felt a friendship towards the Prophet of Allah. Before Sahaba, before a companion, before an uncle or an aunt or a relative, everyone had that connection with him. To the extent that we hear many narrations in which people who lived in the outskirts of Medina and they would happen to come probably just two or three times to visit the Prophet of Allah in their whole entire life. They could count on their fingers and how many times they met the Prophet of Allah. And we read these narrations all the time. So and so person comes to the Prophet of Allah who lived in the outskirts of Medina very far away it was not easy for that person to visit the Prophet of Allah even once a year. Because they lived too far, they didn't have the financial conditions or circumstances to meet the Prophet of Allah, they didn't have a ride. But even in those meetings of just a few times, or even once, even once, the Prophet of Allah وسلم, made them feel that he was that friend. That when it comes to being that ideal friend, the Prophet of Allah felt something more and beyond. And one of those characteristics of a friendship, and by the way, th this particular act or that quality can be applied anywhere, even as a husband, even as an uncle or an aunt, a relative. The Prophet of Allah وسلم, had concerns for others. But the concerns that we have for others, talking about myself first, I can start off with the word sympathy. 
Sympathy is understood in that manner where I just merely understand what that person is going through. This person is going through difficulty, I understand. That's called sympathy. But sometimes we don't even have that understanding. Allahu Akbar, we don't, we don't have that understanding. Just merely understanding what that person is going through. Let alone helping that person. But the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this verse, harisun alaykum bil mu'minin, he would be anxious about your well-being. That was the Prophet of Allah. He not only had the quality of having sympathy, but rather he had the quality of having what? Empathy. And what does empathy mean? <coughs> the ability to not only understand, but rather do something about it. Allah. Sometimes we feel that if a person is going through something and if it's a financial situation, what do we do? The first thing we do, we put our hands in our pockets. I'm like, oh, I'll pretend I don't understand his problems. I'll pretend I don't understand her problems. Because in our minds is that what? We're trying to find the solution, which is a good thing. And we might not be able to give that solution, but it's fine. Let us try to understand it first. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi when you look into the seerah, he was not the richest man. We know stories in which he spent days where Aisha radiallahu anha says that I, three hilals or four hilals, full moons have passed. We didn't have anything in our home to eat. SubhanAllah. So when you think about empathy and to do something about a situation or a condition, it's not always one. It's not always about the financial circumstance that you're in. You can be of support. You can be of moral support for someone. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu gave that for people. And he never let anyone go empty-handed despite the fact of what? You know, sometimes it's understood that when you see a leader or someone who is working, let's start off with the masjid, with the house of Allah. We have individuals who are working behind the scenes and behind the curtains for the house of Allah. We have imams here who are working. So we have a problem, we come up to the leaders, we come up to the caretakers of the masjid, or we come up to the imams. In my mind, I already have that this person knows it all, and I can try my best to find a solution from that person. But we don't tend to think that that person is going through something. Because that is our what? That is our expectation of them. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu was in the position where people should have sympathy for him and they should feel an empathy for him, he deserves it. Before he was born, his father passed away, then his mother passed away, then his guardianship is taken away, then his beloved wife is also taken away, and she passes away. The Prophet of Allah is deserving of all the sympathy and empathy, but yet he's the one who's giving it. SubhanAllah. Whether it's Cognitive empathy or emotional empathy. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu stood by that person. I want to share with you a friendship in which the Prophet Sallallahu shined his sympathy and empathy with a particular Sahaba, which will make us realize how the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu and his character was built. Subhanallah. And that is none other than a Sahaba by the name of Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu. <coughs> Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu was that very Sahaba from a teenage age. Overnight he, be, he had to become a man to take care of his seven sisters. It so happened that Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu's father comes in the home one night. And by the way, the father uh, and, and, and Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, were, they were very close. I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us close to our children, like that of Yusuf alayhi salam and his father. Amin ya rabbal alameen. They were very close, son and father. And the father has decided already when coming to his son, he tells his son that, oh my son, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is calling us for the battle of Uhud. 
The battle of Badr has finished, and now the call from, for the battle of Uhud has been given and announced. And I, as a father, have decided that I'm going to partake and join that very campaign. But you will have to stay back because you have seven sisters. Now, Jabir ta'ala says, Oh, my father, you have decided already, but if you gave me the decision, then I would say that you stay and I go. But the decision has been made and the father leaves. And to keep in mind that Jabir ta'ala was very, very close to his father. And they spent nights in conversation. And by the way, he was, he was the only son. And that love and the companionship that they had, everyone, everyone in Medina knew about it. It so happened after the battle of Uhud, the campaign and the expedition is returning. Jabir who is waiting for his father to come and the news is given to him that his father has passed away and has given his life for the sake of Allah. The Prophet of Allah وسلم, sees Jabir and he knew how close he was with his father. And he gets off his ride and he walks to him and he hugs him. Sympathy to feel what someone else is going through. The Prophet of Allah felt that. Empathy to do something about it. The Prophet of Allah وسلم, at that point, can you imagine just psychologically, there's more than 70 companions have passed away. The Prophet of Allah وسلم, has to pretty much answer to 70 families and he also lost his own uncle in that battle and his uncle's body was heavily mutilated and he has to get off his ride and come to Jabir and hug him. Jabir expresses his friendship and the very sympathy and the very empathy in which the Prophet of Allah had for him and he says the Prophet of Allah one time to help me out financially, subhanAllah. The Prophet of Allah SWT knew that if he had to help Jabir because he was the only man of his house, he had to become a man overnight to take care of his seven sisters. He knew that if he was to help him financially, he will not, be, he will not take it from the Prophet of Allah. He wouldn't. So the Prophet, the Prophet of Allah SWT played a game with him. One day he seen him with his camel. And the very camel that Jabir who had, because of the financial circumstances that he was in, the camel was very old and it was about to give up and is moving slowly compared to all the other camels. The Prophet of Allah says that, Oh Jabir, sell me that camel. Sell it to me. Jabir says, Oh Prophet of Allah, don't, don't play around with me. There's so many camels all around. You don't have to pick my one. Why would you want to buy my one? The Prophet of Allah وسلم, said, no, don't worry about it, sell it to me. He said, then the Prophet of Allah وسلم, says, okay, I'll give you just one dirham for it, just one. And he says that you know clearly that even if I were to give it for free, no one will take it. The Prophet of Allah وسلم, he tells him, okay, I'll give you two dirhams. And he kept going up and back and forth in that conversation until what? The Prophet of Allah وسلم, paid 400 dirhams for it. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam takes that very camel and then he looks at Jabir that he does not have a right to go back. SubhanAllah, if we make a transaction that if I were to ask you to sell me your car, it's only give me the money right now, you take the money and give me the keys. I could care about less how you go home. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells him that ride the camel home and I'll take it from you later. The camel is brought, is brought back to his home, to the Prophet of Allah, because he owns it now. The Prophet of Allah tells that person who brought that camel, and he says, take that camel back to Jabir and tell him that it is a gift. SubhanAllah. This is the type of sympathy, and this is the type of empathy in which our Prophet of Allah showed. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be that husband who shows sympathy and empathy. I ask Allah Ta'ala to be that ideal person and overall to be that ideal friend who is not only able to understand, but rather to be able to feel, to sense, to see, to hear. 
and to be able to have one of the great qualities of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to give us the ability to act upon whatever has been said. Wa akhra da'wahum, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, istaghinahu wa astaghfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa misiyyati a'malina min yahdillahu fala mudillah wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa nashadu wa nasayyidana wa maulana muhammadana abduhu wa rasooluh arasulahu bilhaq bashira wa nadira bayni idhi isa'ah man yutu'allah wa rasooluhu faqad rashad wa man yasillah wa rasooluhu fa innahu la yadru illa nafsah wa la yadru allah shay'a أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم صل المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم صل المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم ارحمنا فإن بخير الرحمين اللهم اشفعنا فإن بخير الشافعين اللهم ارزقنا فإن بخير الرازقين سبحان ربك رب العزة يا ما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وقم الصلاة